Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. So we been told and some choose to believe it. I know they're on wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers and me. When wished upon a morning star Somebody thought of that And someone believed them Look what it's done so far What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing What do we think? Today, we celebrate the divine spark in each person. We call it pride, and we welcome you to our celebration. You've heard the saying that it's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. This is said to be a Chinese proverb that became the motto of the life of Eleanor Roosevelt, who knew and did much to solve problems instead of complaining about them. Today we are also doing something positive, and we're pleased you are here with us. Welcome. To plan and co-create our celebration took many of us many days, as you will witness, and there are many to be acknowledged, some of whom will be identified on the screen as we proceed. Others worked quietly behind the scenes. What we produced will include recordings of all kinds, audio, visual, musical, verbal, and more. What it took to accomplish this is that indescribable element of life that we like to call the divine spark. Hence, we begin our celebration today by lighting candles as a metaphor of that spark. 
that fire of spirit that burns within each of us, impassioning our lives and love, that light that shows us the way and reveals the issues with which we must engage, and the truth that sets us free to be whom we were meant to be. Above all, our efforts today are about the warmth and the challenges of community. None of us were meant to be alone, and together with all our distinctions and differences, we build a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Today, in the light of community, we join together to celebrate our lives, past, present, and to come, to recognize sheroes and heroes and they rose. As the minister of First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio, it is my honor to welcome you and to say, wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here, and we proudly claim you. Won't you too light a candle of pride with us today? the table, the leftovers saved, wash the dishes and put them away. I've told you a story and tucked you in tight at the end of your knockabout day. As the moon sets its sails to carry you to sleep over the midnight sea. Well, I will sing you a song no one sang to me. May it keep you good company. Oh, you can be anybody you want to be. You can love whomever you will. You can travel any country where you're at least. And know that I will love you still You can live by yourself You can gather friends around You can choose one special one And the only measure of your words and your deeds Will be the love you leave behind when you're done there are girls who grow up strong and bold. There are boys quiet and kind. Some race on ahead, some follow behind. Some go in their own way and time. Some women love women. Some men love men, some praise children, 
some never do. You can dream all the day, never reaching the end of everything possible for you. Don't be rattled by names, by taunts, by games, but seek out spirits true. If you give your friends the best part of yourself, they will give the same back to you. you want to be, you can love whomever you will. You can travel any country where your heart leads, and know that I will love you still. You can live by yourself, you can gather friends around, you can choose one special one. And the only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're done. Hi, everybody. I'm Barry Hubbard. I'm a member of University Presbyterian Church. I'm gay and I'm 82. I've been asked to tell my experiences as a gay person and uh, 82 years is kind of a long time. So I've asked Nancy Campbell, my friend from church, if she'll ask me a few questions and try to keep me on track. So Nancy, say hello and let's get started. Sure, good morning. Hi Barry, how are you today? I'm good. Um, Barry, how did you, um, when did you realize you were gay? And when did you come out? And what was it like in the last century or two? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I guess I knew something was up when I first met, uh, when I met Peter, the first love of my life in seventh grade. Uh, but Peter and I never came out to each other. We were best friends, but I didn't confirm he was gay until he passed away about 40 years later because in suburban Massachusetts in the 1950s, if you were gay, uh, you were in the closet. There really wasn't much else in the way of options. So I got very good at hiding my sexuality. Mm -hmm. I came out to my folks when I was 19, and I was lucky, I think. Uh, my family and most of the families I knew were church-going people, but not overly religious. Uh, my folks looked at homosexuality as perhaps a medical or a psychiatric disorder, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it ever occurred to them that it, it was sinful. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, however, socially unacceptable and embarrassing. So our solution was to continue on as though nothing had changed. Yeah. And I continued to be in the closet through high school and college and beyond. Well, speaking of beyond, I understand you were a career Air Force officer. How did that happen and why? <laughs> well, uh, my older cousin Bob uh, had served a stint in the Army after college. And the family thought, well, military service is a good thing. And if it was good for Bob, it would probably be good for me. And at that time, I agreed. Uh, there was a problem, though. Uh, at that time, even to join ROTC, you had to fill out a questionnaire. And one of the questions was, are you or, or do you have homosexual tendencies or have you ever had them? And so I lied. That would, it was the only way I could perform military service at that time. 
And I knew that I could serve honorably, and I did so for the next 28 years. You mentioned going to church earlier in your life. What was your faith like, and was it any help to you as you went through some tough, I'm sure you had some tough times in the Air Force, you know? Uh, yeah, I did, and honestly, the answer is no. Uh, the church community I belonged to was teetotaling, and to put it mildly, the Air Force wasn't. And I discovered that I liked alcohol, and I drank pretty heavily through most of my career, and I stopped going to church. Well, and now you're a Presbyterian, so what happened? <laughs> well, long story. I retired in 1987. My dad had died the year before, and in 1989, my mom came down to Texas to live with me, and I became pretty much a full-time caregiver uh, until her death in 1997. Well, during that period, and even, even before, I'd begun to feel that there was something missing in my life. And so after my mom's death, I began looking around for a, a faith community to become part of. And there was one condition, though, that it would have to be a community that would accept me as an openly gay person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About that time, um, well, you know, at that point, I was 59 years old, and I'd had enough of being in the closet. Mm -hmm. Well, about that time, uh, I saw a notice in the Express News that a group of clergy here in San Antonio we're going to have a uh, workshop at the Blue Star Art Space to talk about uh, faith community and LGBT issues. So I went to that workshop and it was really an, an uplifting experience. Uh, there was a Catholic priest, uh, a rabbi, there were three, several uh, Protestant ministers, mainline, evangelical and Pentecostal. And it was impressive to me to hear each of them say that they accepted and wanted to accept and be welcoming to LGBT people, even if their own churches weren't. Wow. That must have been encouraging. But we're almost out of time. So tell me about University Presbyterian Church. Okay. At that same workshop in uh, 97, Reverend Liv McGregor Simmons made quite an impression on me. So I called her after the workshop and we met and we talked. Uh, we even cried a little together. And she assured me that if I came to UPC, I would be accepted as open Oh, you know, what about UPC? That's kept you there for what, 23 years now? Uh, yes. Um, at first, only Pastor Lib knew that I was gay. But in about two months, uh, she gave a particularly strong sermon, one of many, on LGBT inclusion. And after the service, there was a congregational meeting, and I came out at that congregational meeting. I won't say that it was all smooth sailing after that. There were discussions and reflections. Uh, there were a couple of families that left the church because of it. But we persevered. We persevered and eventually uh, we got to the point in 2011 that uh, University Press became what we call a more light congregation. In other words, we were formally committed to being welcoming and accepting of LGBT people, and we changed our welcome statement to reflect that. Uh, I will say uh, our denomination, which is Presbyterian Church USA, and that's one of several Presbyterian denominations, they uh, approved of ordaining gay, gay clergy that same year, 2011, and approved same-sex marriage in 2015, uh, just a month or two before the Supreme Court did. Yeah. 
So UPC is a welcoming and inclusive church. Is that everything? Well, uh, yeah, except that, that what does that mean? And what it's meant to me is that, yes, if you come to UPC as an LGBT person, you'll be welcomed and accepted and respected, maybe even comforted if you need to be, but you'll also be challenged. We want to know what are your gifts as a human being and how can you use those gifts to make our church, our community, our country, and our world a, a better place? Since this is a pride service, uh, I'll say I'm proud that at UPC, LGBT members serve on our governing board, which we call mm -hmm. a as deacons, as choir members, as ushers, um, as Sunday school teachers, as prayer shawl makers, I know you do that, Nancy, mm -hmm. and the church committees. But that's all within the church. I'm even more proud of the fact that our LGBTQ members go out into the community. We mentor children at Beacon Hill Academy. We help build Habitat for Humanity houses, assist refugees mm -hmm. in the Interfaith Welcome Coalition, mm -hmm. participate in prison ministry, join other faith communities in the Interfaith Community Action Network. That's one of your things too, Nancy, I know. Yeah. And, and finally, that we participate in uh, PRO-SA, Progressive Religious Organization San Antonio, the sponsor of this service today. Wow, thank you, Barry. And let the people say, amen. amen. We celebrate Ruth and Naomi in scripture whose love models women's commitment to one another. Proudly, we claim you. Troy Perry, the father of modern queer religiosity and organized spirituality, who founded the Metropolitan Community Church in 1968. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Jean Leggett, born in Edinburgh, Texas, the first gay minister to be defrocked by the United Methodist Church for being homosexual. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Hap Beltman, author, local businessman, and philanthropist, original owner of the Bonham Exchange. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Beth Nadler, Texas' first LGBTQ lobbyist. Proudly, we set, we claim you. We celebrate Robert Papa Bear Edwards, who founded the San Antonio AIDS Foundation. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Glenn Maxey, openly gay member of the Texas legislature. We celebrate Rabbi Elliot Kukla, who co-founded Trans Torah and became the first openly transgender rabbi ordained by a recognized Jewish movement. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Sister Janine Gramet and Father Bob Nugent, who in the early 1970s founded New Ways Ministry, a social justice center working for the reconciliation of lesbian and gay people, and the Catholic Church. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate John McNeil, a Roman Catholic priest, an academic theologian with a particular reputation in the field of queer theology, an author of many books on LGBTQI spirituality, who was silenced by the church for his advocacy and his writings. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Renee Richards, transgender woman and tennis pro, who was one of the first professional athletes to identify as transgender. Proudly, we claim you. Carter Hayward, an American feminist theologian and priest in the Episcopal Church. In 1974, she was one of the Philadelphia Eleven, 11 women whose ordinations eventually paved the way for the recognition of women as priests 
in the Episcopal Church in 1976. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Jean Robinson. He was the first openly gay priest to be consecrated a bishop in a major Christian denomination, Episcopal. 2003. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Michelle Myers, local advocate for the transgender community and founder of SAGA, the San Antonio Gender Association. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Jean Elder, writer and activist, who saved our community's stories. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Yvonne Jonas, activist, lifetime advocate, and longtime president of the San Antonio chapter of PFLAG. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Jim Osman, founder of Love's Day in San Antonio. Proudly, we claim you. We celebrate Nikki Valdez, activist who started Dignity San Antonio, the oldest LGBT organization in San Antonio, helped organize San Antonio's first conference for the LGBT community in 1976, a founder of the San Antonio Equal Rights Political Caucus, and pro-SA, Progressive Religious Organizations of San Antonio. Proudly, we claim you. What other LGBTQ plus people do we celebrate? During this upcoming music, we invite you to name them on our chat stream. We honor and memorialize Hella J. O'Regan, a transgender woman who was murdered on May 6th, right here in San Antonio. Yes, we can. 
Yes, we can. We can build a beautiful city. Not a city of angels, but finally a city of man. A city of Hello, my name is Pam Myler, and I'm with the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. Church and God were presented to me early. The people in church with their Sunday best look good on the outside. Amen was whirled into the air when the preacher spoke to the faithful. My younger self only understood the God of judgment. People seem one way in church and different after leaving when no one else was looking. Resistance well deep within me. I was 10 when I discovered I liked girls. During that time of my life, I instinctively knew that society would not approve of these feelings. Being different and feeling ashamed, I found safety under the blanket of pretend. I then found a like mind and a kindred spirit in another girl. We staggered into an uncharted relationship, fused in love and in fear, love for one another and fear of discovery. The fateful day came when the words of a love letter were stolen and spilled out into the entire high school and subsequently the community. It was 1984, and it was being a lesbian was not okay. It was not okay with high school. It was not okay with the community. It was not okay with my parents. And all of this made it not okay with me. I wondered where God was then. My insides were pushed to the brink and my very survival was in question. The degradation shattered my spirit and I could no longer take the whispers by others or the fear in my parents' eyes. I broke within and resolved to become what others branded as normal. Desperate to break free from the hate animosity and revulsion, I slipped into a life not of my own for years. I shrouded my own self-deception with the trap of addiction. Depression choked my spirit and I wished for the end. I went on to marry a good man named Alex. I was lucky because his love soothed my conquered spirit. He knew the truth. We had a beautiful child named Justin. Justin was born under a pound and the neonatal intensive care unit would become our home. He eventually came home unscathed except for some developmental challenges six months later. And then unexpectedly, Alex died of a brain aneurysm three years later. I was a single mother now with a child in need of help. I asked, seriously, God? I dove headfirst into the abyss of grief, addiction, and self-denial for years to come. Sobriety saved me at times, but resentment, anger, and grief would throw me back into relapse and darkness. I again wished for the end. I asked, seriously, God? One day, the bottom came hard. I surrendered to all the hurt, all the pain, all the fear, all the rage, 
the anger and self-loathing. I called out to this so-called God, help me. It was through the love of others that I was introduced to the God of my own understanding. They said, Pam, it can be anything other than you that you believe, trust, and can have faith in. I started with believing that they believed. It was at this point that I met myself and saw the truth. It was finally okay to be me. Seeing others being comfortable with their truth soothed my tortured soul. Step by step, a beautiful life began to form, founded in being true to myself and others. Once I found God, I found me. When I found me, then I found her, a Scottish beauty with the soul of a warrior. A trip to Connecticut and now together legally for 11 years, my wife Linda and I live out loud and proud. We are loved by God, our two sons, Justin and Alex, our family, friends, and even those parents of mine who so long ago struggled based in fear with my sexual orientation. Both of our parents are some of our fiercest of orders. Our struggles have come, but they have also come to pass. And we remain connected and protected by the Great Spirit. I am no longer trapped in shame. I can finally say with an open heart, thank you, God, <laughs> for you were there in the darkness telling me never give up. And because I didn't, I found the light of your grace. Thank you. With gratitude for the freedom to be our true, authentic selves, may we live the spirit of pride. With the courage that comes from challenging fear, may we live the spirit of pride. With sorrow for those who could not be here with us today and those who have lost their lives, we live the spirit of pride. With grief for those whose pain was unbearable and who left us too soon, may we live the spirit of pride. Looking ahead to the justice still withheld, may we live the spirit of pride. Confidence that a sense of community banishes isolation and loneliness. May we live the spirit of pride. With the rainbow flag flying high, a sense of beloved community among us, and the joy that comes from making new connections, may we live the spirit of pride. Hi, my name is Alex Cato, and I'm the youth minister over at Travis Park Church. Today, I would like to just share a little bit of my journey and how I ended up as a queer youth minister attending seminary. First thing to note is that I grew up in a Southern Baptist church in a small, small town in Georgia. Now, when I say small, I mean, everyone knows you go to Beverly's Beauty Salon to get your hair done and your weekly gossip. And that's the kind of small town. I was very active in church my whole life and especially in youth group. And they were my chosen family and youth group was my life. I jumped at any and every opportunity to hang out with my church friends. They were everything to me. By the time I was 17, I knew my call in life was vocational ministry, but I didn't know what that meant or what that looked like. By the time I was 18, I was a typical college camp counselor. And so my college years were spent working in student ministry every summer and realizing that my call was to walk alongside students as they figure their life and their faith out. And then, by the time I was 22, I realized something else, that I was not straight, that I am not straight. At that point, I was still pretty conservative in my beliefs and even more confused than ever. I spent a lot of time frustrated that God would make me like this because I tried very hard not to be, and it was clear that I had no say in the matter. And then I was further frustrated that God would make me like this and call me to a ministry that I didn't even feel welcomed in. And to be honest, I didn't know much about other denominations outside of the Baptist or non-denominational world. 
And what I did know about those told me that not only was I not called to ministry, but I wasn't even called to be in a loving relationship as a queer woman. And instead of researching, I gave up. I gave up on my passions and God's call for my life. But surprise, God did not give up on me. I met an amazing woman that was supportive of me and my faith journey as I began to discover denominations that were in inclusive and affirming. And it did not happen instantly, but I finally began to reconcile my faith with my sexuality. I started looking for queer representation, uh, resources, and any information that there were people like me that felt called to ministry while not being straight. I began to pray daily and ask God for clarity and discernment on this topic. And when I say God showed up, I mean it. God made it so abundantly clear to me that hiding and repressing who I am is not what God wants for my life. The God I know is a God of freedom and love, and this is the God I remember. I even jumped out on a limb and applied for a seminary program that would pair me with a church to be their youth director while I went through seminary. And though I applied, I had pretty much ruled out any chance of acceptance because surely there was not a church that inclusive and that affirming. And yet again, as usual, I was quickly reminded of how sovereign our God truly is. Now I'm two years into my three-year residency working on my master's while being able to work with students at an awesome and loving church. I'm happily engaged to that same woman who is constantly supporting me and cheering me on through it all. This journey that I've been on hasn't always been easy and I'll admit that I may have lost friends and opportunities due to who I love. But when I think about who God is, I know who God has called me to be. And I know that this loving relational God does not make mistakes and did not make a mistake when creating me. I know how easy it is to get discouraged when you hear opposing opinions on such topics, but I hope that I can encourage you today that you are not alone, that there have been many to go before us, many going through it now and many to come. So when it seems very easy to give up, I hope that you remember that God has not given up on you. Thank you. Es un gusto poder compartir con ustedes en este servicio. Estamos aquí para construir un mundo donde todas las personas sean celebradas y amadas. Damos gracias. We can get thanks. For celebrating sexual and gender diversity as a blessing that enriches us all. We give thanks. To overcome cruelty and bullying toward LGBTIQ children and teens in schools and communities. We give thanks. For honoring the dignity and worth of each person. We give thanks. Inspiring us with dreams and holy impatience. We give you thanks for challenging us to believe out loud. We give thanks. God of many names, thank you for creating LGBTIQ people and our friends. Breathe new energies of kindness and love throughout the world. Renew our commitment to work for justice for all. We pray this in your holy names.